With no way to extinguish the blaze, concern grows that tank cars filled with liquid petroleum gas could erupt into blevies. Firefighters pull back and police evacuate a one-mile area surrounding the fire. But a TV news crew chooses to stay behind, just a half mile from the flames. The fire is making a sound like a jet liner taking off. Something apparently blew up just a couple of minutes ago and started this big roar of flames and uh, the sound of a jet liner. What the news crew doesn't know is that the noise they're hearing is the warning of an impending blevy. Fuel, discharged from a ruptured car, has stoked the fire and the flames are now heating another car carrying propane gas. Moments after the reporter signs off, 30,000 gallons of boiling propane push the tank's metal walls to the breaking point. Okay, get the tape on. You'll leave it up, for Christ's sake. The news crew feels the heat wave from the blast. Blevies from liquid petroleum gases like propane are much hotter than those from other fuels, making them extremely dangerous. Bystanders or people within the vicinity up to a thousand feet could suffer uh, burns from the radiant heat from the fireball that's been released. Liquid petroleum gas levies also have tremendous force, which can turn exploding tanks into airborne missiles. The six-ton tank car in this blast rockets nearly three-quarters of a mile into a field. At the Murdoch explosion, the propane car, that Blevy, traveled 3,640 feet. We need to go, Andy. Let's get yeah. in here and go. Shocked by the power of the blast, the news crew retreats two and a half miles from the derailment. As night falls, the flames finally make their way to a nearby tank car filled with highly flammable isobutane. This latest levy creates a blinding whiteout as 50,000 gallons of fuel is ignited. Fortunately, just four minutes before the blast, George Wineland manages to escape the scene. May 4, 1988, 15 miles outside of Henderson, the Pacific Engineering and Production Company, or PEPCOM, burns out of control. My God! The product PEPCOM manufactures, ammonium perchlorate, a crucial ingredient in rocket fuel. Television engineer Dennis Todd videotapes the blaze from nearby Black Mountain. The crew and I were on the mountain doing routine maintenance on a television tower, looking at it, the brilliance of the fire was something like I'd never seen before. Rodney McCarroll also watches the growing inferno from a neighboring building. My plant was about 1,200 yards from where Petcom was at. We could see people who were scrambling and, and fire hoses breaking out, and we saw that they were trying to fight this fire. Inside the factory, Petcom employee Roy Westerfield conveys the magnitude of the emergency in a call to 911. Fire department. Emergency. We need the fire department. All you can get here immediately. What's the, what's the problem? Oh, we, we got everything's on fire. Close to a thousand rescuers respond to the call, including Larry Sullivan. I knew what was in there. I know they store a lot of uh, uh, fuel there. And in fact, this day, there was approximately, from what I hear, nine million pounds of this stuff stored there in plastic drums. Before Sullivan and the other firefighters can make their way to PEPCOM, the chemicals, exposed to intense heat, finally reach the point of combustion. Oh! Ooh, that's going to be loud! The magnitude of that sound when it reached us uh, was still extremely large for something that had traveled over a mile. Can't tell me people got out of that. Oh no, there's got to be hundreds. Of people. But the destruction has just begun. Minutes later, two smaller explosions rip through the desert. Oh, there's another one. Well, they had all that fuel stored out, and then another. You can see people actually literally running through the desert, 
trying to just get away from Pepcon. Four minutes after the initial blast, the fourth and largest explosion erupts from the factory. is so intense, the shock wave vaporizes a nearby factory and registers 3.5 on the Richter scale. It was just like a wall of water coming at you. And I remember it literally picking me up off my feet and never touching the ground. I mean, it literally picked me up and threw me at least 40 feet.